Welcome to the webinar guys. This is the first webinar that we're doing over at Forex Watchers that's public. Um, how do you guys like the new site? Have you guys gone through the course? We've opened up the course for you guys. We've made it free and uh, um, basically I think uh, you know this was something that we used to sell for I don't know three four hundred dollars uh, and then we also had it at Udemy for like 50 bucks and then we just opened it up for the public for free so hope you guys will enjoy the course um, I missed the chat room oh you mean on urban forex yeah that one urban forex is shut down the chat room it wasn't actually going anywhere um, there was a few people talking here and there's a lot of advertising a lot of folks you know we, we cross-reference the information uh, whatever is uh, typed in the chat room and uh, not very credible information let's put it that way okay uh, we, we still need it. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. Well, let's see. If if we get more than 50 requests for a chat room, we'll get it up. Uh, but for now, um, no. Uh, Rainer, uh, if you're talking about the course, it's on forexwatchers.com. Small issue with the next lesson button on the course. Oh, has it still not been fixed yet? Uh, let me just check it for you guys real quick. Ba -ba 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 -bum. Okay, fast track course. Okay, say no new money. Oh yeah, yeah, not fixed yet. Okay, I'll 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 get that fixed. Uh, it should be done in the next uh, six hours or so. I'll get a staff to do it. Thank you for notifying us on that. Um, okay, so let me open up uh, Trading View. Okay, anyone new today? Anyone new to our our conference rooms here or webinar? The live webinar, but seen videos. Okay, okay. So welcome, welcome. First time after two years. Okay, okay. Great. Hello, uh, Raghunathan. All right. So let's let's get started here. So my name is Naveen Prithiani. I am your host here at ForexWatchers.com, and basically uh, we're gonna be discussing divergence today. How to master the art of divergence. Now, is do you guys use divergence with RSI? Okay. Stochastic. Okay. Well, let's let's put up some stochastics here. Okay. I'm gonna insert it. 833 okay let's put up 833 for eight eight candles passed and then three and three okay here we go so here we got it all set up now let's start from the from the beginning so what's a divergence a divergence is when price and indicators uh, are, are, are doing something that is not visible Okay. Now, for example, when this, when this, these lines go up, you know, all indicators do what according to price? What do they do? What's an indicator's job? Yeah, they follow price, right? So if price is going up like this, let me maximize this and remove all that. So if price is going up here, then so does your indicator start to go up? Okay, but notice one thing here. Notice how each thing makes a higher high, higher high, higher high, higher high, but on your indicator, you're not getting that higher high. In fact, you're getting something different, almost like lower highs. That's a divergence. You know, in, in, in simple terminology, we call it the opposite. When you see the opposite happening, it's, it's basically an indication that price will turn. Does that make sense? Uh, there's uh, there's a lot more to the strategy, but we're just gonna go into uh, the different areas of divergence. How can you use them in an uptrend? How can you use them in a downtrend and stuff like that? And then we'll do some practices so you guys can point out if something is a divergence or not. 
Okay. Divergence failed on Aussie yen pair. Okay, let's let's take a look. What time frame, Papo? Fifteen minutes. Uh, Paresh, does divergence work all the time? Um, no, not all the time. Uh, because it, here's an instance where divergence might not work, uh, Papo. This is the same instance here. Now notice this high that keeps going up. How many swings does this thing have? One, two, three, four, five. It's still going. Usually in two or three swings, a market refreshes before continuing. For example, here, here's the single swing, here's a second swing, and then a refresh phase before continuing. This one just keeps going. So when you have stuff like that, you're seeing on a higher time frame that this is probably the first major move that's happening. Okay, when, you're, when your movement just never fades, they call it the fade, right? When an up move and you're trying to sell the up move, it's called fading the uptrend. You're trying to grab the turn, okay? So when you're trying to do that and it's not working, not working, not working, the, the problem is on a higher time frame, let's say the four hours, this thing is strongly just started, okay? So then you'll have to use uh, higher time frames, uh, SNR and stuff like that to gauge an area where it may start showing some reaction. All right, so Joe, how would you trade uh, Japanese yen pairs with a recent up move and barely any retracement? Well, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Uh, Tej, Naveen, would it be possible to darken the indicator color? It's very light with the white background. Okay, sure, sure. In fact, uh, maybe I can make the background darker. No. Here, I'll just make it darker, like you said. Is that better? All right, so now... Moving on, moving on. Let's look at some examples. Okay, let's go to Aussie USD for example. Okay, now in Aussie USD, oh no worries, no worries. Aussie USD. Okay, so uh, we're we're on a four-hour chart here. Now I can do this. I can look as detailed as this, where I can say, hmm, here we go. That's a lower high. And then I can do the same thing below me into the indicator, which is right there, right? If I look just below and I'm like, okay, well, what did I do? Okay. If I look just below, I'm like, okay, well that made a lower, lower high also. So does anything change? Is there anything opposite? No. The best times when we like to see opposites is when it comes from the extremes. Now, when I, when I say it comes from the extremes, it's, ab it's above or below the dotted lines. Those are extremes. If it comes from that area, the opposites, it's very nice. It's actually quite powerful. Okay, now on the other hand, take a look at this one. But when it was going downwards, let's do the downside. When it was going downwards, it made lower lows sequencing. If, if I do this lower low sequencing that I just connected and I look at it below it, I'm going to put the line here so you can see just below it. And I do the same thing. I connect the low from here to the next low of there. Is that the same as this one? Okay, it's the opposite. Okay, so then we have an indication of what we call divergence. Now, whether you want to call that... Uh, um, you know, the, the terminology that they use is, uh, ah, what's the word? I haven't used it in a while. They have regular divergence. They have, uh, help me out here, guys. What's the other words for divergences? There's uh, hidden divergences. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. So I'm just going to make it simplified for you guys. Just use the word opposite. Uh, keep it simple. And uh, it, should, it should help. So. Uh, can you show an example when the indicator lags, I mean, gives wrong signals? Well, right here, right here. When this market is going down, here the indicator is not going down. It's actually making a higher high, a uh, higher low, sorry. So w one thing when you want to do when you do your divergences is if you connect the lows on your price, make sure you connect the lows on your indicator. Don't connect the highs on the indicator. You do the same exact same thing down here. Okay, and usually in the exact same area or vicinity.
Okay. All right. So let's look at some more examples. So these are indications of market turns. Now, here's the thing. Did the market turn here or did the market turn here? Number one or number two? Yeah, the second one. But then we had the divergence on the first one and a good 16 hours to 24 hours passed by before this thing happened. So how would we know to wait for the next one or is it going to be the first one? Who's taking my course? Who's taking that fast track course on ForexWatchers.com? Okay, it's free. You guys should have all done it by now. Halfway? Halfway? Okay. Well, take a look here. So I'm going to help you implement divergence with the way to read the markets. Okay? So bear with me here. It might be a little bit difficult, but I'll repeat as many times as needed. Okay. Markets are in an uptrend. Okay? Earlier, just in the beginning of the webinar, I said when the markets are moving in a certain direction, after a few swings, they need to refresh before continuing. Okay, a refresh can be two things, a pullback or a, or a consolidation. Okay, a pullback means the sellers are competing against this buyer. Okay, or you can call it the buyer is removing some of his money. Okay, whichever language you want to use, that's fine. On the other hand, we can say when the market's in an uptrend, and then instead of pulling back, it goes sideways, we can say the sellers have no power and the uptrend is very powerful. Okay? Or we can say the buyers are not removing any money. They're maintaining grounds. Okay? So keep this ideal ideology in mind. Okay? Uh, don't just label things that just because it's a range, I need to learn how to trade a range or... Let me connect the dots. No, keep it a little bit more complex than that. And that's too simplistic. Okay. Now, once you see this pullback happen, what's the speed of the pullback? What's this first one here? How does that look? Strong, weak, sharp. Okay, following that. Yeah, 600 kilometer speed, okay. And then following that, what's the pullback ratio? Okay. Slow, uh, small, small, you know, small retracement. Has it surpassed this? No. Okay, then it goes down again. How much further does he go down? Okay, he doesn't go down much further, does he? He goes very little. So if you compare the first leg to the second one, you're like, oh, the guy barely went anything. Um, is, does everyone have sound issues? Back to the screen. You guys can still see the screen. So this was the first move down. Very big. Shallow retracement. Very small retracement, which means the cell is very strong. Then the next cell comes in. Okay, what does that tell you? The next cell. How much more did he go compared to the first guy? Very little. Not much, right? And then how much retracement did he do? Okay, also small, but did he overcome the guy who started the second move? Okay, not yet, not yet. Okay, then he makes another move down. Minor, doesn't go below. And this time, he reaches up to here. Now, when he reaches up to here, does it look like the sellers are, are dying? Yeah, they're on their last breath. You know, the sellers are dying. And it also looks like the buyers are coming back, which means the big boy, the original gangster, is back in the game. He's coming back. He's showing his presence. Okay, now once this happens, you're also noticing divergence at that moment. Okay, divergence gives you a clue. <laughs> the OG gives you a clue. And then you have this, you know, slowing legs giving you a clue. And then you have the major clue from the buyers coming in saying that he's an indication as well. Now, once you see all that stuff, notice when the buyer comes in, he doesn't really make a higher high yet. He's right there. No higher high. If there was a higher high, 
we'd want to catch the buy off of this support resistance and then buy it. Since he's at resistance and he has not breached it, okay, since he's at resistance and he hasn't breached it, he's going to do another test down. And we're going to determine based on the test how strong the quality is. Now the test comes in, how, how strong is the test? Uh, Siraj, no, unfortunately not this style. This is something I teach over at Forex Watchers in the community program, the elite course, basically. But uh, it's something that you have to learn to read, basically. Ah, uh, Raganathan, also good. All right, so it comes on very, very strong, but then no lower low, and it snaps right back with an exhaustion, as if that low never happened. So now you have the test is holding, and then he starts to maintain grounds here. Just candle after candle after candle. This is a four hour candles. That's 16 hours of sideways movement, just maintaining grounds. And then weekend hits, and the market starts up blasting north. Because all the sellers, but from here until here, can you say now they're exhausted? They're just, they're finished? So notice, to reach this level of understanding and mastery of reading the markets, we use not just one thing, not just divergence. We didn't use just exhaustion candles. We didn't just use how big is the leg. We didn't just use how much retracement is there. We didn't just use who's stronger, the buyer seller. We combined everything to our knowledge, to our disposal. It's like using, you know, you have the Batman belt and you use the tools you need for the right time. But you need to know all the tools, but you gotta use all the things. Yeah, and, and psychology as well. You get to see what's going on with the markets. Is there someone, you know. Now, usually this is what happens. When you see this buyer come in here, most people get excited. They buy here. These are amateurs, they're not newbies, they're amateurs. The newbies will, will basically sell here. They will sell in a downtrend right there. So the newbie mistake is there. They're gonna sell there and they will lose their money because they're selling too late. The amateurs, they know not to sell. They know they have to buy only because the trend is up. But they will buy it at the first sign of buyers. And where, where do they put their stop losses? Right there. Okay. So they're gonna get hit. And once they get hit, they get scared thinking, oh, maybe the sellers are back. Then they try to sell the poor thing and they get hit the second time. Okay, uh, sound skipping again. Um, okay, one second. Yeah, I can, I don't know if you guys can see my screen, but on the top right, my connection says fair. Give it a second. Okay, the sound should be back to normal for everyone. Yeah? I think it should be fine now. I should stop my downloads? No, I have no downloads. I'm not a torrent person. <laughs> no downloads on my end. Okay. So, um... Uh, yeah, it's recorded anyways, just in case you guys want to watch it again. It's recorded. So, shall we continue? Let's continue. Um, I think we... So, so do you guys understand that... Uh, let me put the chat box back. Um, that mastering divergence is, is a skill that needs to be uh, used together with reading the markets. Cannot be used alone. If you use it alone, yes, it gives you a very good heads up. But to know to use divergence either here or to wait for it and use it here and then get into the long uh, can make a difference between winning and losing. And it can also make a difference between winning small and winning big, right? So wouldn't you like to add in that additional 10, 20% of knowledge and make sure that you can limit your losses just based on that extra knowledge? So it's worth investing some time into yourself to learn stuff like that. Okay, so let's do some more examples and see if you guys are catching the drift. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do some more examples and then uh, see if you guys can follow along. Okay, give me a pair, guys. What pair do you guys like?
Gold, gold will leave out of this for now. Uh, pound yen, okay, there's two for pound yen. Let's do pound yen. Okay, pound yen. All right, all right. Ooh, pound yen. This thing has risen back up. I think we were looking at this for a pullback sell, but he's come much, much stronger up. Okay, okay, that's gonna be fun. Okay, should we use a candlestick pattern for confirmation of the divergence, Mitch? Uh, no, uh, not necessary. Uh, a candlestick pattern is uh, a single candlestick pattern st stands alone. Uh, but if you if it's there, it's extra bonus, but it's not something that should be required, I would say. Uh, Jack, am I right uh, that I take Euro USD always as a leading pair? No, no, uh, not as a leading pair. Leading and lagging has to do with who takes the lead in moving. For example, um, are you are you guys all all of you guys are on top of uh, uh, the yens? Have you guys looked at the yen markets today? Yeah. So a quick uh, a quick overview uh, on the yen markets. Now this is pound yen. Let me go to USD yen. Now. What's the USD yen doing right now? Yeah, it's retracing. It's going up. Okay. Has he made a higher high? Okay. No, he's made a higher high only compared to the previous swing, but not against the second one. Okay. Plus, he's below major support. Okay, keep that in mind. So this is USD yen. I'm gonna go back to pound yen. Pound yen, major support is here, and he's just gone up above the first higher high, barely, not the second one. What does that tell you in terms of strength? Which one is stronger in terms of retracing? USD yen. That's when we say the USD yen is leading to retrace and pound yen is lagging. They're both doing the same thing. It's just one is is leading. So now, if USD yen is leading for a pullback, if you're if you're thinking of selling, which is a better pair, USD yen or pound yen? Yeah, it would be pound yen. USDN is leading to pull back. Now, why is it pulling back so hard? Okay. So again, I think you'll you'll get all this information in the fast track course. Um. But <laughs> Brexit. <laughs> but you'll 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 get all this information in the fast track course. We, let's let's not uh, get away from uh, uh, divergence for now. Let's just uh, continue continue with that. Okay. So. Let's 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 go and uh, look at some more divergences now. Would we say this is a divergence? Let's look at some extremes. We have a high here. Let's not diverge from divergence exactly. And then we have a lower high there. We have a high here, same spot, and then we have a higher high. Sorry, worst drawing ever. Um, okay, then we have a higher high, something like that. There's a divergence there, right? Okay, so now this thing crawls up on you and then just drops. Okay, of course, that's the Brexit moment, but a divergence did show up as well. Here's another one. From this high to this high, it's either a higher high or equilibrium. But if I do the same thing lower, we don't have that situation. We have higher high to lower high. That turns you a turn in the market. Now this one is a lot easier to read because you can see the slowdown of the buyers in this market. Now, what kind of market is this? Yeah, it's a downtrend market, yeah? So in a downtrend, when you see the buyers struggling like that, isn't that a good sign? You put that together with uh, 
uh, divergence, you know, the opposites, and you get a hint that, okay, you know, something is not right. So you look at each move. Let's 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 understand it because this divergence happened. If I say if I if I went like this, I would say the divergence started happening there the first time, which is oh no, not here yet. It it has to be there. Okay, so it is it is here in this area when the divergence happens. Okay, so let's look at this move up. It moves up, pulls back. Has he breached this guy? when he pulls back the first time no then he goes up stronger and then he pulls back as he breached this guy when he pulls back no but this time at, even though he went up stronger his pullback is also strong okay now he goes up this time weaker and his pullback is still medium. Comes down 50%, but doesn't breach this guy. This whole time, it's also creating an uptrend line. Just moving inch by inch by inch. Then he pulls up higher, and this time, no higher highs. And then he collapses very hard with that red bar. That's your sign together with uh, your 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 divergence, your resistance, uh, you name it. You know they're all piling up here. Here's your resistance. Your if if this was looked at a downtrend, followed by a range to refresh the market, followed by the next downtrend. That's a very good sell opportunity from the top of the range. Okay, to continue with the downtrend if it does. He comes down, he pops back in though, but then he gets back down lower again later. Okay, so decent amount of money from there to there. Okay, I don't know if it would reach down to here, but the target objective would be based on your current market condition. And in this particular case, it was in a range. Okay, so make sense? That, did that one make sense? So the more difficult one was the next one, was the Brexit move, where it just creeped up on you and dropped. Those are harder to catch because you, there's no confirmation. It's just pure risk. We can't just pull the trigger, right? So you, you want to watch out for stuff like that. You don't want to just uh, pull the trigger on anything. Okay, next pair, EURUSD. Okay, this can be applied on all time frames. You don't have to do it on the daily because I'm doing it on daily. Okay, we'll work from Euro USD work to uh, uh, pound. Okay, let's remove all this. Oh yeah, so da, 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 da. how'd you guys do on the NFP? Were you guys with me on the NFP last uh, uh, on the webinar at uh, FX Street? How many how many of you guys attended my webinar at FX Street where I did? The aftermath of Brexit and uh, NFP uh, outcomes. No, none. Uh, one, Joe. Okay, I think we did. We talked about uh, uh, pound, and we talked about uh, uh, Euro USD, I believe. Yeah, uh, NFP didn't cause much panic. I think it was New Zealand USD was the other one where we said it's going to bounce around sideways before going up. Yeah, so these are the results for those of you who have watched that webinar. Here's the outcome. These are the drawings from that day. Still haven't removed them yet. Okay. Um, all right. So back to Euro USD. Let me close all this. All right. Let's take a look at this now. Okay, so divergences on this one. Now, what's this? Is that a divergence? No. What about this? Okay, 
So now it's a divergence, right? So it wasn't a divergence on the first pullback, but on the second major pullback, it does become a divergence. But that seller is way too strong. It's not a slowdown. If it was a slowdown in this uptrend, we'd be like, yeah, well, let's fade it. You know, let's try to buy it. But the divergence has happened. Now the slowdown is beginning. So we're going to have to watch it. So far, sellers are still in control of the market. We're going to have to watch it carefully. Nothing yet on this one when it, when it comes to live analysis. Now, let's take a look at the other one. Here's one here. I'm going to connect this high to this high. And then down just below, I'm going to connect that same high to that. It's a slight higher high. So, okay. No, nothing there. Not as prominent. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Here we go. There's another one. Low to high. Ah. And low to lower, not higher. How do we do this? Shall we read this one? Is that a divergence? Do you guys all agree? All right, so flow of the market up, sideways, up, starts dropping down, coming down to challenge these boys. Okay, uh, so let's take a look at how each, each legs move. So we got a first push here, and then a slowdown. Any signs of sellers dying up until that point? Yes, no? Audio lagging? No? Next move down. A little bit less, but any signs of the seller dying? Any pullback? Notice I'm stopping at the halts. I'm not stopping at one green candle. I'm stopping at when I see a, a variation of multiple candles stopping or pulling back. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, the next thing, he goes down stronger but snaps right back 100% as if that low doesn't exist. And notice all of this is in the boundaries of this, either if you guys have training of supply and demand, it's in that area, or it's in this trend refresh area that says the up might continue. So whoever was the buyer here, he doesn't want that price to break. He still wants that price to hold. Yeah. So once he comes up to here, just like the last divergence that we talked about, when he went up 100% from here to here, did he break resistance? No, which means wait for the test. Wait for the test. Remember I told you, this is the point where the amateurs start buying. And that test right here, it will come as far low as the recent low, and it will try to kill them. If not, it will start making lower lows, and we have to still wait. Okay? But once this happens, and then the candle starts moving back up and starts closing higher, now it's your sign that time to get onto your longs because the markets are changing directions. Okay. Does that make sense how we can put all that information together? Now, notice here there was less information available. There wasn't an exhaustion candle like last time. Uh, there was a sharp reversal here. I think uh, in the fast track course I call it a V formation. Okay, and then there was a test phase here and then a, a major rise there. Okay, would we have to wait for the candle to close? As of right now, yes. Um, you know, if you're advanced, you know, like, like, like I said, if I don't know if, if any of you guys are here, I don't see any names from anyone at Forex Watchers community, the elite community, but uh, generally they don't really wait for the closes. Uh, they can sense when the markets are moving uh, and, and they get in. 
because it's all about getting in earlier than later. So uh, we work with timing a lot, which means getting in here is unknown. Getting in there is very late, but getting in here gives you the best opportunity. So there's a lot of emphasis on and training just on timing uh, that we do a lot. Okay. All right. So moving on, moving on. I think I saw pound USD on the list as well. So this one, all good. Uh, see, Rich, it's it's on it's on the site. Um, those of you, uh, there's you know there's there's waiting lists and stuff. I think uh, so after the fast track course, the fast track course is free. And then there's the elite community, which is uh, this thing here. This is the elite community. This is where um, these are people I personally train. Uh, most of them are one-on-one -on -one members, which have come to me in person, either in Thailand or London or uh, Cyprus or Canada, and they've trained with me live. Um, so they're, they're highly trained people. And on the left side, we have our, you know, our member, uh, our our team. So these are the people who used to be members who I've hired and they're now working with us. And these are the members who are uh, undergoing training still. And yeah, you know, so there's stuff like this as well. They gather, they, they meet. It's not like, uh, it's just an online community, you know, we're the only community where people actually meet in person. So, and we're not afraid to do that. So that's, uh, I guess that's the best thing that separates us from the rest. All right. So, Moving on, moving on. So the, yeah, uh, the, uh, the community, for those who are interested, uh, we do have some seats open up uh, at the end of every month. Uh, it's first come, first serve. So whoever gets onto the waiting list, they all get an email notification. And then uh, whoever jumps on it first gets in. Okay. All right. So where were we? Back to Euro USD. Okay. So we were going to pound dollar now. Let's take a look at pound dollar. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys one. Let's let's go through some examples quicker now, and you guys tell me divergence or not. Divergence or not? Okay. So here, yes or no? Yes. Okay. Here, yes or no? Yes, okay, here. Yes or no? Yes, okay, here. Good, good. All right, you guys are catching up on this. Okay, good. Again, as a rule, if you're connecting your highs, connect your highs on the indicator also. If you're connecting your lows, then connect your lows on the indicator also. Okay, don't connect anything in between. Don't cut through charts like this and be like, oh, look, that's, that's a higher low. You know, don't do that. I've seen many people send me pictures like this saying, is this correct? Um, and and no, you know, that's not correct. But now you know. But yeah, uh, try to never never cut through data. Uh, even if it's on your charts, even if it's on anything, never cut through data. That data was there for a reason. Don't cut through data. Okay. How do we know how big the change in trend will be? Ah, that has to be determined by your read of the entire trend. That's a very good question, actually, Manish. Um, I'm impressed. Um, because it's like this, right? Like, notice this massive trend coming down. And then you have this major sideways movement. And then you spot, let's say, a teeny weeny divergence here. How do you know that divergence is not going to just go from here to here and it's going to go from here to all the way here? That requires you to understand all of this to all of that. Okay? The duration from this to this and then from that to that to that to whatever will happen next. 
It's understanding that entire logic and putting it all together and being like, not yet. I'm still going to hold on. I'm still going to hold on. It's still a sell. It's still a sell. You know, stuff like that. Then you start thinking par partially um, trader and partial investor, which is good, which is good. Okay. And I want this for all of you guys. I want you guys to start trading in such a way where trading actually fulfills why you're trading. Okay, one of the first things I do with all of my members is ask them, why are you trading? What's the purpose? If you do not know your purpose, then everything you do in trading is wrong. You need to know why you're trading. If you want to be free, you want to travel the world, you need to trade a higher time frame. Okay? If you want to be sitting in front of your computer all day long and you just you love trading, then yeah, you trade 15 minutes, 5 minutes, 1 minute. But if you want to use that money, I suggest a higher time frame. Okay? So it's very important to sit down one day and just think, well, you know, what do I want to do? What do I want to do with my money? Okay? I, I want to make 10% a month on my money. Okay, so you're like an investor. Stick to a higher time frame then. Higher time frame for that, for sure. Uh, for those of you who are trying to make an income, uh, I would still say stick to a mid-sized time frame. One hour, four hours. And for those of you who have a higher level of income and have the thrill and adrenaline rush, uh, but the capability to control the adrenaline rush, smaller time frame can do it but remember a smaller time frame is harder than a higher time frame always 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 okay I mean do you ever use harmonic patterns bat butterfly garden link? no um, I got a lot of questions about bat so we might explore a bit into that um, and we might explain it in our way uh, because bats it's, it's a very common question people have been asking so we don't like it, but we'll explain it and we'll give you our twist, our, our version of it. So keep a lookout for that. Maybe the next webinar, maybe. Uh, ATR. Okay, so ATR up here. A quick uh, answer to ATR for um, Papo. Over here, ATR, it says that my period is 14. 14 means it's going to look back 14 candles and it's going to give me the average true range. That's what an ATR means, which means... Right now, the number on the ATR, if I look on the uh, number here, it says 0 0.025, which means 25. Uh, sorry, uh, it's 253. It's, it's like reading uh, your, your pips. So it's 253 pips. Okay, so the last 14 candles, the average movement is 253 pips. Does that make sense, Papo? So in the last 14 candles, if you combine them, the average movement is 253 pips. So if I'm trading and my target is 500 pips and I look at the ATR, does that seem reasonable? 500 pips of a goal for a target? No, it seems a little bit out of reach. But if my target is 180 pips, Now I know I can reach it, and then I also know maybe I, sh I can go for 200 or 220 if it allows me. Okay, so an ATR is a good judgment tool to, to get an idea of what's the current situation of the market. How much movement is there? Why is 14 used all the time? It's two weeks. 14, 14, you know, seven, uh, two weeks of, of candles, basically. Or if you're doing one hour charts, then 14 only means 14 hours, which would mean one and a half session. So it's very important. On the daily chart, 14 is important because that's two weeks. That makes sense. There's news, market changes, blah, blah, blah. Two weeks is good. But on an hourly chart, if you use 14, you're doing one and a half session you probably want to do eight or something like that to get an idea of what did one session do. So understanding why 
you choose 14 or 8 or 7 or 2 is very important. Okay. All right. Sorry. There was one more question in here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Where do you go? Uh, won't you be coming to Chicago? Uh, uh, Chicago. No plans yet, but I maybe next year. Uh, on my because from London I might be coming back to Montreal, uh, and then from Montreal uh, my my family lives near Chicago, so uh, I always go through uh, O'Hare. So I, I do come by Chicago quite often. In fact, I got to meet the. Uh, uh, the founder of Trading View also he's in Chicago as well. So, uh, do you have any recent visit to Tanzania? No, no, not yet. I've uh, never been there. Um, so need to uh, uh, look into that. Maybe sounds cool. No idea from Malaysia as well. No idea from Malaysia as well. Uh, I will be back in Thailand next year. That's currently home for me. I live in Bangkok now. So. So guys, do me one thing, uh, do me one thing. So promise me you guys are gonna take the full fast track course. You're gonna do it from the beginning until the end. You're gonna practice it as much as you can, yeah? It's free now. Please try to avoid the psychological barrier of, you know, it, when, when, I, when I built the fast track course, my first thing was I'm gonna make it free. But then all my administration, my managers and everyone, everyone's saying when you give stuff out for free, people don't give a crap. They're so lazy. Charge them out of their asses and they will, they will focus. I get that and it works like that. But I'm going to be sincere with you. This is very valuable information which used to be charged and now I'm making it free for you guys. So please use the opportunity to learn it. It was a paid service, a very expensive paid service. Use it, learn from it, and if you feel your trading has improved quite a bit, then you have the elite community to think about if that's something you want to do. You don't see advertisements from Forex watchers ever on, on TV or on media or anything. We don't advertise. We're only word of mouth. So, you know, take it as you go. Take it as you go. As you feel fit, our doors are always open. Okay. Uh, late in Thailand now. Stay there too. Maybe I see you in Bangkok. Oh, great, great. Yeah, yeah. If you guys are in Bangkok, um, it would be great. Uh, do you know when you will have the new educational-only access for Forex Watchers? We, we've turned that off. There is no education-only. We believe if you want to do education-only, it's better to join the community. It's better to learn with the community uh, so you can enter conference rooms like this, the one I'm doing right now, we do two of them per day. Uh, but we're just looking at the markets live and we're saying, okay, what's the opportunity? What are we going to do? After we do that, then then they build their own uh, analysis. For example, uh, this is Armo. He's built uh, uh, USD CAD and New Zealand Yen based on his probably his uh, 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 webinar that he did this morning. So here's one, he says 1R minus 1R on this one, which means he's lost 1R, one risk to reward. Here, he's made plus 2.8R, he's made 2.8 times his risk on this one. Okay, so this is, they do session, they trade session by session. Okay, and here's his video on his post analysis on how he did it. Okay, generally, I require everyone to do three videos. A, a before, a during, and after. Okay, it's something we we like to take pride in. You know, do one prior, do one during your trade, and do one after your trade to recap. Okay, um, Sean, if they don't pay for it, then people don't see the value in it. Long way to state yes. Yeah, and it's very sad, and it's very sad. Uh, this is why, unfortunately. The more expensive our courses become, the more valuable we become. But it, it's sort of somewhere inside me. I, I, I don't feel comfortable with that because I want to help, but I can't help because people don't people abuse the, the cheaper or the free things. So, yeah, it's 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 weird. It's weird. So, you know, I, I did fight with uh, my management to keep the fast track free, at least. Um, did get into a lot of heat by that, <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. It's a decision I took on my hands, and I'm paying for it out of my pocket. But then, uh, 
the elite course uh, will still be there and uh, I've helped lower the price for that on the elite course it's no longer 5,000 for memberships uh, it's around 1500 now so okay uh, where can we see pricing Naveen for for what Jake are you talking about the elite course if you just click on the elite course on forexwatchers.com uh, it's all there our elite community sorry Uh, do you know when you will have a, da, 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 see a da, da, da. how long will you think it would take to uh, learn it Juan yeah I think your question is how long do you think to it'll take to learn it okay here's one thing I, I do recommend the fast track course um, is very powerful and it's in a nutshell um, however however if you want to apply the entire knowledge that we give out uh, let's say the community and stuff I recommend not coming in for just three months or so. I recommend trying to see that you're going to be coming in for at least six months or a year or something like that. Uh, because it, it does take time. It does take time to fail. It does take time to learn from the failure. It does take time for us to notice the pattern of, wait, he's not doing this based on the education. He's doing this based on his psychology. It takes us time to notice that psychological pattern as well to say, oh, be, watch out, be careful from this, you know. So uh, we have to observe all this and it takes time. Uh, it cannot be done in a month's time or two months time. So anyone who's looking for a get rich quick scheme, it's this is not the place. This is not the place. You know, you guys know our stuff. We, we do it as best as we can um, and we teach it the best we can. So. Uh, is it legal to hedge two different brokers? I, I guess it is, you know, go for it. <laughs> I, I know people used to do that a lot back in the day. I don't know how convenient it is anymore, but they used to do that. Um, the support and resistance doesn't work on your course. Okay, Mitch, thank you again. I will get that changed again. Let me, let me, I should, should write all this stuff down. Okay, so we got the uh, next lesson link that's not working and support resistance. Thank you so much, Mitch. I'll uh, I'll have the team send you a coupon code for uh, the community. We'll get you a good discount if you ever want to join. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, please address support resistance. Yeah, uh, I, I, w I will, Mitch. I will uh, let them know as well to get that uh, get that fixed. Don't stay, don't stay too long, soy cowboy. I know that street. I know that street. I've, I've parted there a couple of times. It's, it's an interesting street. Okay. Uh, Sean, you can't hedge in the U.S. if you're on the same broker. But using multiple brokers, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. You didn't hear it from me. And I'm going to cut this part out from the recording. <laughs> you didn't hear from me. Um, is a pro trading strategy in Urban Tower still your favorite? From the strategy systems, yes. Uh, uh, Tim, it, it is my favorite. Uh, pro trading is probably uh, the most powerful one. Urban Towers is probably the closest as you're going to get to um, how I like to see the market. But... Both of those still require you to take a very static approach. So I want to remove people from going static to more dynamic. And dynamic means understanding the flow of the market and you being like water and just moving with, with the markets, you know, just bending and flowing around it. Okay. Uh, any visits to Germany soon? Uh, no, uh, no plans for Germany yet. Um, uh, one of my staff is from Germany. He's, uh, in fact, you might, you guys might uh, meet him. Sometimes you get an email from him. Uh, his, his name is Robert. He's from Germany. If you guys get a response in German, <laughs> yeah, it's the German staff that we have. Excellent people. Excellent people. Okay, guys. So. Let's let's uh, end it there right now. Uh, we've done a full hour. Uh, I, I wish I can answer more questions. We'll catch up again in two weeks. Hopefully, in two weeks, when you guys do the fast track course, you'll have more questions. Um, I've usually I've reserved these webinars for people who have questions from the fast track course to make sure you get better and better and better. So.
do the fast track course fulfill your promise to me and i will see you guys in two weeks time thank you all for coming guys have a wonderful day cheers bye for now love you guys too <laughs> bye